Good evening, students. Uh, my name is Narola Longkamer. I am a teacher at Government High School Learman under Mogokchung District. So today I'll be your uh, English teacher for class 9 and the topic that we're going to do is from prose section that is Dr. Talimaran Ao, the football wizard. So that is the lesson that we're going to take and it will be good if you can have your textbooks with you and this lesson is in page number 47. So if you can uh, refer to your textbook, uh, it's in page number 47, I repeat. All right, so um, let us start with the lesson. So here we are going to today study about a football legend named Dr. T. Ao, that is Dr. Talimaran Ao. And uh, my dear students, many of you must have heard about him and for some people it, this might be new for you, but I want you to listen carefully so that uh, you can understand about him better, right? So this is about his life story, the achievements that he that he had in his life in his football career also right so uh, dr tali maran ao was born in chanki village under mogokchung district okay so chanki village is a village under mogokchung district and then he was born on the 28th of january 1918 i want you all to remember the dates properly so that uh, this will really help you in in your exams all right so he was born on 28th january 1918 and his parents names were Reverend Subung Wati Ning Dangri and then his mother's name was Moa Sangla Changkilari. I repeat, Reverend Subung Wati Ning Dangri was his father's name and then his mother's name was Moa Sangla Changkilari. Okay, so uh, right from uh, an early age after he grew up in, into I mean like not very old but after he became uh, you know uh, 17 18 years like that after he became an adult it is said that he had a very towering personality in fact Dr. T. O was a uh, uh, renowned for having a very good personality, all right? And why is having a very good personality important in a person? For example, you might be very good looking, you might have very good physical features, but if you don't have a bright personality, then people will not like you, isn't it? So that is why, uh, you know, people got attracted to him from a young age because of his towering personality, right? And on top of that, it's like, you know, adding uh, more cheese to the... Uh, Topping, uh, apart from his towering personality, he also had a very uh, uh, tall height. Okay, his height was five ten as he reached uh, his adult years, right? So five ten, and then good physical features. On top of that, he had so uh, you know appealing personality. It is said that he was such a refined gentleman. So uh, all. Because of all these factors, you know, uh, it really helped him all throughout his life, okay? And um, when you go to your textbook, the second paragraph of page number 47, uh, you can see a reference of the American missionaries, okay? So, in Dr. T. Ao's life, the American missionaries were very significant. Why is that? It's because he studied his uh, schooling in Impur, okay? So, uh, Impur was the mission center for uh, the American missionaries who first came to the Ao region, right? So, when he was there in Impur, the American missionaries could see that you know after completing his school hours he would go to the fields and he would you know start playing with the fo uh, football so the missionaries could see that he was very articulate and skillful in using his football and then playing with it okay so they predicted that you know one fine day this young boy is going to grow up one fine day and become a very you know great footballer Right, so that is why the American missionaries really encourage him to play and practice harder, okay? And the year 1938, students, The year 1938 is very significant in Dr. T. Ao's life, right? So why is this? It's because this was the year that he joined Cotton College 
in Assam. Okay. So, in 1938, he joined his first ISE, ISC at Cotton College, uh, Assam. So, ISC here would mean, basically mean, uh, you know, after passing your class 10, you join class 11 and 12, right? So, that would mean, during the previous times, it was known as ISC, right? So, during Cotton College, um, people came to know about his football skills. That is why he was made the uh, captain of the college football team. Okay. So he was made the captain and then uh, as he was playing people could uh, really see his skills and a very important incident happened when he was studying in, in Cotton College. Okay. There was a certain college called Murari Chen College in Silet. Okay. That is Silet is another uh, place in Assam nearby Cotton College and uh, it was a long tradition uh, in Assam that you know Cotton College and Murari Chan College, they always met uh, to play a friendly match between the two colleges. Okay. And that year, remember, he was the captain, right? So uh, he led the college football team and went to Silet to uh, uh, play a match uh, with that college. And one very interesting thing that happened was that it was, you know, continuing for 13 years that the other college, Murari Chan College, was uh, always winning the uh, football match. Okay? And that year, very surprisingly, Cotton College won the football match. So it was, you know, very surprising for every one of them. And even the college was very happy. The professors were happy. The teachers were happy. Okay? So, you know, you could understand the kind of of situation that uh, you know the kind of glory that uh, Dr. T out brought his college right so that is how again it escalated that means it increased his popularity right and um, the principal when he was studying in Cotton College the principal and uh, the professors of Cotton College were also very helpful towards, you know, uh, Dr. T. Ao. Why is that? Is because he was a very good student. He, you know, did all his homework. He did well in the exams and he was very regular in his classes. I hope all of you students, you might be doing that. So he was a very good student. At the same time, he played great football. So the combination of these two, you know, really uh, intrigued the teachers to, you know, have a liking for him, right? So we teachers also, we like students who obey the teacher, you know, have respect for the teacher and it is always good to do your own work on time, right? So that is how uh, he became a favorite among uh, his teachers and professor also. And uh, during the match, I said that Murari Chan College and Cotton College, they played the match, right? So in that uh, match, uh, it was uh, the, the last goal of Dr. T. Ao, which led the team to win the match against Murari Chan. So the last winning score was uh, given by Dr. T. Ao. And one thing that the observed boys, uh, I think you might relate with me, somebody who is very skillful in his, uh, you know, playing the ball, Take the example of Cristiano Ronaldo, for example. He is very good in, you know, skillfully, you know, taking the ball to the goal side, right? And then he will score the winning goal, right? So even if opponents come on the way, they they are not able to block the, uh, you know, player because he's such an expert, right? So that kind of player Dr. T. Ao was. So that's why, you know, people really liked watching him. And then it was also said that, you know, whenever there was a, a match played uh, between the college and other rivals, and if Dr. T. Ao was playing then, you know, they, it attracted more crowd, it seems, because he had a certain charisma, right? And after, in 1938, the match was played, he was the captain, and all those things were unfolding. And then, uh, the sensational news uh, of, you know, Cotton College beating Murari Chan College spread like wildfire uh, among the Bengali and then the Assamese fans also. So people were very curious to know about him. Now in the present times, you can, if you can relate with this situation, suppose you like a certain football player, then you will try to Google it, try to know more about him, right? But during the olden times, uh, the, you know, uh, news or 
you know, getting a news from another person. That was the only source of information, right? So the news about him being such a good, skillful football player spread like wildfire. And people were so curious and, you know, people were saying that, oh, there's a certain uh, Naga headhunter and he's very good in playing football. So, you know, people will start coming and uh, in a very short while, he became a favorite among, you know, remember he's, he was studying in another state, right? But even in another state, even among strangers, he became quite popular, right? And another thing that we can note is that it was uh, Dr. T. Ao's father's dying wish that his son, Dr. T. Ao, become a doctor and study medicine. Okay. So after uh, he uh, studied class 11 and 12 in Cotton College, he went on to join R.G. Carr Medical College in Calcutta. So uh, this was the college where he studied medicine. Okay. So during that time, by the time, remember, he was already there in Cotton College. Now he has moved to Kolkata. So, you know, uh, he's continuing his studies. At the same time, he's not leaving football also, right? And many Bengali people also came to know about his talent, right? So after he joined this uh, R.G. Carr Medical College, he met a certain uh, person called Sarad Das. Again, the name Sarad Das is important in the lesson. So in uh, Calcutta, he met Sarad Das and this person, he was also a very young footballer, a very talented footballer like Dr. T. Ao. And then uh, he was already popular uh, among the you know, uh, footballers and he, had already joined a certain football club called Mohan Bagan. And when I say the word Mohan Bagan, remember students, uh, nowadays, if you can relate then, famous players like ba Baichung Budhia and then Sunil Chetri, the uh, Indian uh, football captain, he's also from Mohan Bagan, okay? So it is a very, Mohan Bagan is a very famous football club based in, Kolkata, right? So he was met, uh, his friend Sarad Das encouraged him to join Mohan Bagan. And then thereafter, he was also able to join Indian Football Association. Okay. So uh, that is how, you know, he was able to carry forward his studies at the same time, his football career. And students, when we look into the life of Dr. T. Ao, there are some very important things that we need to note. First is his personality. So I was saying earlier also, you know, if we have a bright, attractive personality, be it young people, old people, everyone will start liking you, right? So that was his plus point. And then um, uh, his teachers and his professors also really helped him to enhance his football career. Why is that this? Because remember, I told you about that incident at uh, the football match between Murari Chan and Cotton College, right? So that time, it is said that his final exams were going on and he had appeared all the subjects and one subject was left for him to appear. So uh, the principal of the college exempted him from the exam, not because, you know, just to let him go like that, but for him to go and play, play the match. And at first, it is said that uh, Dr. T. Ao was a bit reluctant because that time he was the only science student. And then in fact, he was the only Naga st uh, students uh, studying science in Assam. So he really wanted to, you know, keep the name of the Nagas also and, you know, his family also. That is why he was a bit hesitant, but uh, the, he talked it out with the principal and then the, he went and then he won the match right impossible it was like an impossible thing but he really brought back a uh, great victory to the college right so that's why the principal was also happy and remember I told you that uh, Dr. T. Ao was a very good student also right so had he been a bad student then the pr uh, principal would not have considered you know uh, his final exams isn't that but because he worked hard from before because he was very obedient from the beginning that is why he uh, w was able to win the trust of the college faculty okay and then 
uh, even the American missionaries were, you know, really helpful in, uh, you know, molding his football career. Why is that? Is because, uh, you know, during that time we people we were headhunters, right? And our parents were not educated, so nobody, if there was no one to encourage him to play football, then he would have maybe not continued his uh, football uh, practices and skills, also, right? So, you know. All throughout Dr. T. O.'s life, what we can understand is that all along the way, he met the right people, he met the right opportunity, and then when he got opportunities like that, he tried to met, make best use of it, right? So that is how he was uh, able to have a perfect uh, balance between uh, football and then his studies also. And uh, for this is for extra information students, but I'd like to, in simple words, I would like to tell you the meaning of talimaran, okay? So, Dr. T, our full name is talimaran Ao, isn't it? For our people or for our students, you might relate, but for the other students, I would just like to, you know, uh, break down the meaning for you. The name contains two names joined together. One is Tali and then the other one is Meran. So here, uh, Tali in the Ao dialect would mean more or much. Okay. So, and then Meran would mean, you know, bringing glory or, you know, uh, bringing a good name. That's what we can relate to. So, Tali means more and then here I said this is glory right so we can you know what we can understand from his uh, name is that he brought uh, the meaning is that bringing much glory so in simple words we can understand talim maran as bringing much glory so all along as you you know go about the lesson as you read the lesson as you listen to our explanations we can uh, relate from the different incidents the achievements the popularity that he had all throughout his life we can you know really say that he really lived up to the meaning of what his uh, name uh, is saying right okay so um, Previously, I said that there are some important uh, events and years in the book which is important uh, for you, right? So another important event in the book is the, uh, is the year 1948. So why is 1948 important is because it was the year that uh, Dr. T. O. represented India for the London Olympics, right? See, India got inter independence in 1947, isn't it? So, 1948, India was able to join the London Olympics. And for the football team, uh, Dr. T. O. Uh, led the Indian team as captain, okay? So, there, uh, you know, cer there were certain incidents that happened which was, you know, very interesting for the whole world and then, you know, people really recognized the talent of Dr. D. Oh. In the first match, it is said that uh, India won the match against Burma by default, okay? And in the second match, it was played against France and there, uh, India lost the game by 2-1, okay? India lost the game but one very interesting thing that the world audience, the world spectators noticed was that uh, Dr. T. O. was playing barefoot. So in one interview, somebody, a reporter asked him like, uh, Mr. T. O., why are you playing barefoot like that? No? So his reply was again very smart. Remember, he's a good student and intelligent also, right? So he, uh, he told the crowd that I play football, not bootball. So basically it means that the shoe is not important for him, but he was using his uh, bare feet to uh, really utilize his skill and play the ball. Okay. So the shoe was not important, the boot was not important for him, but 
his feet was more important for him. So that is how he replied. And then uh, the world were really amazed because all the other players from the other teams, from the other countries, they were uh, using uh, the football boots. But for the Indian team, they all played barefoot, it seems. So even if, you know, India's performance was not that great, you know, uh, seeing somebody who is a little different from others, we all, all like to watch that kind of things, right? So that is why uh, India's popularity and doctors, uh, Dr. T. L's popularity really gained key. And then during his uh, career as a footballer, it seems Dr. T. O uh, toured uh, lots of uh, Southeast Asian countries and then many Asian countries and all along you know he was popular he was very skillful he really knew how to interact with the crowd also and there is a certain incident given in the book it's in page number 49 Dhaka Dhaka is the capital of Bangladesh isn't that so when they were uh, the Mohun Bagan Mo Mohun Bagan team, they were uh, supposed to play a match in Dhaka. Uh, it seems Dr. Tia was not feeling very well. So he just rested in the restroom and he let his teammates play the game. But you know, the crowds were becoming very restless and then the crowd were asking, bring back Dr. Tia or else let's cancel this match, we will not play. So that is the kind of popularity that he had, not only in another state of India, but abroad also okay so after that you know the other teammates came to him they convinced him to come out of the uh, restroom and he you know uh, get got ready to play the match and then only the crowd subsided it seems so he was very popular outside uh, india also and then naked Naga Headhunters. This phrase became very popular when Dr. T. A was a footballer in Mohun Bagan. Why is that? It's because, see, Naga people, we were headhunters previously, right? And we were a little backward than the other states of India, right? So, uh, somebody rising up from that kind of culture or from that kind of uh, society and then playing very good football, at the same time, very good in studies. So, who will not like? that kind of person, right? So uh, it is said that, you know, because of him, before, because of his personality, because of his, you know, good behavior, the uh, it brought great uh, uh, value and integrity to the name of Nagas also, okay? And then another year that is important in the lesson is the year 1950. So 1950 was the year that Dr. T. Au completed his MBBS degree, okay? So he's, he was studying uh, medicine, remember, in Kolkata, right? So he, in 1950, he completed his uh, degree as a doctor. And then initially, in the year 1952, he was met to join the Burger Medical College. So there, he worked as a registrar in the ENT department. So when we say ENT, uh, you know, doctors also have special uh, different abilities, right? So when we say in ENT, they specialize in this, you know, uh, upper portion of the face. So he was an ENT doctor there. And then after, uh, during this time in 1952, remember that Nagaland didn't get our, we, we didn't get our statehood, right? So we were still under Assam. So uh, after working in Dibugar, he was transferred to Kohima as assistant surgeon in uh, uh, Naga Hospital, okay, and uh, he also became the director of health and fam uh, health services in Nagaland, and then he served there until retirement in uh, until the year 1978. And all throughout his lifetime, he was associated with different football clubs and associations and sports events. Okay, so some of the uh, uh, councils and associations that he was affiliated to were the Indian Council of Sports in 19. Uh, there also he was a member and then the Indian Football Association and then it is said that he is also a life 
a permanent member of the Mohun Bagan Club ki until his death. And then he was also uh, a member of Nagaland State Sports Council and then Nagaland Badminton Association and then Nagaland Football Association also. And when you look at page number 50 in your textbook, one another very interesting thing that unfolded was now Dr. D.O. became a doctor, he came back to Nagaland, he was working in the you know, medical department and all, and then he retired. But it is said that he never retired from football. Even though he was old and even though he could not play football, uh, he always made sure to you know, attend uh, uh, sports events and football events. Okay. And during one time, um, the Mohun Bagan Club came to Nagaland to play a friendly match with uh, the Naga players. Okay? And one reporter was asking him like, you are a permanent member of Mohun Bagan Club and on top of that, you are a Naga. So which, you know, both are your very, you know, both teams are very close to your heart. So whom do you support? The reporter asked like that. And then what he replied was, of course, I am a member of Mohun Bagan Club, but the first thing is that I am a Naga, right? So that is why I will support Nagaland team. And very luckily, it seems, uh, Nagaland team won the match against Mohun Bagan that day, okay? So, you know, the kind of respect that he had among uh, the football uh, scenario and then the kind of personality that he portrayed and everywhere he went he went to international events also he played at the international level at the local level at the national level also but wherever he went he always made sure that he uplifted the name of the nagas okay. And then it is said that in the year 1956 Dr. T. O married a staff nurse named they gave dongle, so they got married and they had four children, two daughters and two sons. Okay. So, and then uh, he lived his the rest of his life. After he got older, he you know um, settled in Dimapur, and then it is said that on 13th September 1998, he after a very brief illness, he demised. Okay, so on 13th September 1998, he. Uh, he passed away and then Dr. D. Ao left a legacy that is very laudable, that is very praiseworthy, you know. Many people, at, uh, during a time when Naga people were not very educated, we all were headhunters, we were very backward, but at a time like that, he made sure that he studied hard, he made sure that he uplifted the name of the Nagas and at the same time, his love for football never went out of his heart or out of his life. So that is how he, you know, always maintained a perfect balance. And Another uh, friend of Dr. Etiao, after he passed away, said that, you know, during that time, we didn't play football uh, for money, but we played football for the love of the game. So nowadays, you know, we see a lot of international players also shifting from one club to another because their whole motive is money, right? But for them, they were so simple, but at the same time, so honest and dignified also. Na? So they, it is said that they played football, not for the love of money, but for the love of the game. So on that note, I would like to conclude this lesson and then um, even though the teachers have explained different lessons to you, I want you all dear students to keep in touch with your textbook so that with the help of a little explanation and as you keep on you know, reading your books, you'll be able to relate more with the story of Dr. T.O. Thank you so much.